Welcome. In the previous session, we have discussed about taxonomy, which deals with the identification, nomenclature, and classification of organisms. I have already told you that classification is not a single step process. There are many steps or categories when you try to classify an organism. Let us take an example. Suppose a group of scientists have come across a new organism which they have not seen previously. So by looking at the organism, they have to classify it. First and foremost, what they require is they should be able to correctly describe the features. So you have to identify whether the organism is a microorganism, of course, if it is a microorganism, it can be seen only through the microscope. Let us say it is an animal. Now, when we say animal, there are millions of animals. Animals includes fishes, reptiles, birds, mammals, insects, etc. About which we will study in the next classes. So, which type of an animal is it? Is it a bird? Is it a reptile? Or is it a mammal? Then, let us say it is a mammal. Then, is it a carnivore or a herbivore? Then, whether it stays on trees or whether it is on land? Does it have a backbone or not? Right? So, all are, these are the questions that we need to address before we classify the organism. So, we have animals, then we have different categories such as mammals, birds, reptiles, etc. Then we have another category where animals with backbone and animals without backbone. These are all the different categories in the steps of classification. So, such categories are called as taxon. Every step in the classification is called as taxon. Now, after studying various groups of organisms, plants, animals, etc., scientists have concluded that there are a basic of seven steps when you classify an organism. These seven steps or categories are what are called as the hierarchy of classification. So what are this? It starts with kingdom, then there is phylum. These are the seven levels in the hierarchy of classification. Hierarchy means what? Means it is in an increasing order or in a decreasing order. So now it is in the decreasing order. Arrow mark is down. If I were to put it in the increasing order, then we will start with species and then we will proceed upwards. So when an organism is discovered, it can be placed into this hierarchical system. Each step is called as a taxon. Each step. So we can place organisms into one of the following taxons based on their similarities and their differences. Before we get into discussing all this in detail, let us understand an example which will give you a better idea of what we are going to study. Take for example, there is a foreign traveller who is visiting India or your local place. Now, he is looking for directions to a particular place. He is trying to describe it with what he has seen in Google or etc. If he is able to describe the place correctly, then you will be able to give him a proper direction as to where he has to go to reach the location. This work can be done in an easy manner if 
he has an address if he or she shows you the address of the place where they want to go we can look at the address and immediately you come to know where the place is and then you can guide them to their destination so the hierarchy of classification it acts like a address to an organism each step here in the hierarchy of classification it gives you a particular feature about the organism like its address so when we write address on postcard etc so we write our name right and then we write the room number and the name of the building in which street or locality it is present and then the post office number and then the pin code number and then probably the district or the state so once the postman sees the address he knows exactly to which house the letter has to be delivered similarly this hierarchy of classification when we look at this hierarchy of classification we know what the organism looks like what is its features so this is something like the address let us discuss about this a little in detail in the hierarchy of classification the basic unit of classification is species so now it is in the increasing order of classification now if you look at this classification there are two three important things you should realize number one organisms at the species level they show more similarities whereas at the highest point kingdom the similarities are very less there are hardly one or two similarities so as we go from species to kingdom the similarities will decrease and the number of organisms will increase so this contains literally thousands of organisms whereas in species you might have a few tens or hundreds of species so let us begin with species species is the basic unit of classification it is a group of organisms which have the most number of similarities because they have the most number of similarities they can interbreed they can reproduce among themselves so species is a group of organisms that can interbreed dogs can interbreed with other dogs whereas tigers can interbreed with other tigers this is possible because they share lot of similarities therefore they are put together in one species the next level of organization is genus now species is placed under genus a genus can have many species for example panthera is a name of a genus panthera under this genus we have tigers panthera tigris we also have panthera leo lion and then there is another species panthera pardus that is leopard all three are different species tiger is a different species lion is a different species leopard is a different species but all of them are put together in the same genus panthera so a genus is nothing but a group of species as you know the similarities will be comparatively less between one genus and another genus moving on to the next one that is family family is nothing but a taxon that is a group of or a collection of many genus all the genuses with similarities are put together in the same family for example the cat family cat family includes your tiger lion cheetah leopard and your domestic 
Okay. In this case, the tiger, lion, and leopard they belong to the genus Panthera. But both the genus Panthera and the genus Phyllis are together placed in the same family that is family Felidae together called as the cat family so family is nothing but a group of different genuses and the similarities are very less of course they are the, in the same family because their body structure is same look at the body design of a tiger, cat, leopard, cheetah, panther, cougar etc. All of them have the same body design but the sizes may be different. So because of that they are in the cat family. Whereas compare a cat with the dog, both of them are placed in two different families. Cat belongs to the family Felidae whereas dogs, wolves, fox, Jackal, etc. They are placed in the family Canidae, where they have got long canines. You have observed the teeth of that. So, these are a group of genuses, that is, family. And usually, family name will end with the AE. In animals, that is AE. In plant kingdom, the families end with the word ACA. So AE and ACA it refers to family. Going one step higher, we have the order. Order has got very few similarities and it is nothing but a group of families put together. Here we take into consideration only their vegetative and reproductive structures. So that is considered for classification into order. For example, both the cats as well as the dogs family Felidae and the dog family Canidae. Canines. That is the dog family. Both of them are put together under, under the order Carnivora. Because these are all meat-eating animals, carnivorous animals. So both these families are in the put in the same order, carnivora. So it is a group of families. All these and other animals, for example, tiger, lion, cheetah, leopard, cat, dog, wolf, fox, jackal, cow. Okay, whale that lives in water, giraffe, etc. All these they share a common property that is, they are all mammals. These are animals which have hair on the skin, and the females they provide milk to the young ones, they have mammary glands. Therefore, all these animals are together in the class. Mammalia. There are there are different classes. There are mammals, then there are reptiles, amphibians, avis, etc. So as we go higher and higher, the similarities will decrease. Phylum is nothing but a group of classes. If you look at animals, animals which have backbone and animals that do not have backbone. So that is a classification. So animals that have backbone are put in the phylum Chordata. Animals that don't have backbone, for example insects, are put in the phylum non chordata In plants, instead of the word phylum, we use the word division. The cat family, the dog family, the cows, the giraffe, the deer, the insects, the snakes, the tapeworm, starfish, hydra, etc. All this together, they are all put in the kingdom Animalia. All these are animals because 
they show movement and they are multicellular they are eukaryotes and mostly they cannot prepare their own food therefore they are not in the kingdom animals those organisms that can prepare their own food are put it in the plant kingdom so that is how when we look at classification we get a brief idea about the address of the organism there is a description of the cat family which already discussed now when we compare this with the dog family you can see up to the family level they are all different meaning the differences are many but both of them are then placed in the order carnivora right so some similarities are there then all these two are placed in the class mammals so that is what i told you in the beginning as we go higher in the order of classification the similarities will decrease they will have one or two similarities whereas the number of organisms will increase number of species will increase whereas at the species level the number of similarities are very much but the number of organisms are lesser in these taxon or categories similarly you can look at the hierarchical position of human beings as you can see in the diagram so human beings belong to the genus homo which is placed under hominidae which is then placed under the order primata these are primates which is then placed in the class mammalia and phylum chordata because we have our backbone and placed in the animal kingdom so human beings cats insects snakes dogs all are together in the animal kingdom so by looking at the categories we can tell or we have a fair amount of idea what does the organism look like so that is the importance of classifying the organisms the last question is what are the tools or techniques that we have which will help us in correctly identifying an organism correctly describing an organism in which will help in the proper naming of organisms so that is what is called as taxonomical aids here the word aids refers to mechanisms or devices aid means to help so these are the devices which will help in the study of taxonomy which will help in studying characterizing identifying naming and classifying the organisms there are four to five important taxonomical aids herbarium herbarium is a storehouse it is a collection of plants which are dried pressed and preserved these plants are dried pressed and preserved on special sheets which we call them as herbaria sheets so it is a thick like your cardboard but not as thick there is a standard size of herbarium sheet everywhere in the world the dimensions of which are 16 and a half inch into 11 and a half inch so this is the length and this is the breadth so that is around 41 cm into 29 cm so it is a specialized thick paper with this dimensions in this paper plants along with their root stem leaf 
if flowers and fruits are available well and good so these are dried so that all the moisture is removed then these are pressed under weight for weeks and months and when it is completely flattened with the help of gums and bristles these are stuck on the paper in this herbarium sheet the name of the collector who collected this plant location of the plant from where was it collected it includes the latitude and longitude the correct location is written on that and also the local name of the plant the scientific name of the plant etc all these descriptions are written along with the date of and time of collection is written so the advantage of this herbarium sheet or for that matter any taxonomical aid so there are couple of uses of this taxonomical aids so it will help in study of organisms especially in the field of research and teaching for example there is a plant which is in your lesson which is not available in in your locality or in your state but available in some other state so we can just order the herbarium from that particular place and show it to the children so it will help in research and teaching that is the use one and number two it will help in identification of species or identification of new specimens supposingly a plant has been obtained from the same locality you want to know whether it is a new species or not so what can you do the plant that you have collected you can compare it with the plant on the herbarium sheet so it will act as a reference material for identifying new plants basically it will also help in classification and not only that herbarium sheet also can be used to preserve extinct and rare species once upon a time this plant was available thankfully you have preserved it in the form of herbarium sheet now that plant is no more because of deforestation and other human activities it has become extinct it is no longer available but the herbarium is available that you can use for all these purposes and it can also be used to preserve some rare species that way herbarium plays a very important role as a taxonomical aid the largest herbarium is present in england in the royal botanical garden of kew in india the largest herbarium is present in kolkata the next taxonomical aid that we are going to discuss is botanical garden in botanical gardens of course as you know here live plants are grown so this is a garden where all exotic medicinal plants important plants plants where research has to be done all this can be grown in the garden so that is the important point here plants are live live plants are grown and these botanical gardens can also be used to earn some income uh, visitors students etc can be allowed to visit these gardens and once again these have the same use as herbarium sheets so all these things are applicable even to botanical gardens the largest botanical garden is once again present in kew that is england the third type of tax taxonomical aid are the museums now museums are the place where dead animals and plants are preserved and very important point is that 
Museums are usually part of some institutions, grant or fund from university institutions. Museums are set up. For example, Asia's largest pathology museum is present in Manipal, the Manipal Anatomy and Physiology Museum. It contains more than 3,000 specimens of dead animals which are preserved in jars of chemicals. If insects are present, they are kept in special insect boxes pinned inside. And if the animals are big, for example some birds and mammals, they can be preserved as stuffings. Also, you will find skeletons of animals and birds in such museums. So, all these plants and animals, they are preserved in solutions. So, they can be preserved for a long point of time and they also serve the same purpose. Only thing is that, this is the important point. These are maintained by institutions, schools and colleges. The next type of taxonomical aid is zoological park or simply called as zoos. These are areas, enclosed areas where animals are cared for different animals they are cared for and sheltered in this zoological parks all these are live animals and the environment is created in such a way that the environment within the zoo is similar to the natural habitat of the animal. Therefore, with the help of this zoological parks, we can study how does an animal adapt to its habitat, how does it behave in the natural habitat, how does the natural habitat affect the life and reproduction of an animal. So, such in interesting responses to the environment can be studied in zoological parks. Of course, these parks are also open for students, children and visitors and it also brings some amount of income. That is about the zoological parks. The next type of taxonomical aid are called as keys. A key is a very important taxonomical aid. It is basically nothing but a set of contrasting questions or contrasting statements. Contrasting means there are two statements here and together we call it as a couplet. So this key will help in identifying a unknown organism. For example, once again you have come across some plant you want to know whether it is a new species or a already known species. So you ask two questions and you always choose one answer for that. For example, let us say does the fruit of the plant, does it have a thin skin or a thick skin? So these are the two statements. These two statements are called as couplets. Now by looking at the fruit of the plant, you will be able to answer this question. Let us say it is thin skin. So, this option is removed. That's why it is contrasting. Both are, both will give you opposite answer. And each statement in a couplet, each statement is called as a lead. Because it will lead you to the answer. So, it is thin skin. If it is thin skin, then is it fleshy or is it dry? That is another couplet, another statement. Now let us say it is fleshy. Okay, this statement is gone. Ask another question. If it is fleshy, whether the seeds are present in juice filled compartments or whether the seeds are present in dry compartment. You can imagine what you are thinking, right? So if it is present 
in juice filled compartments it is tomato if it is in dry compartment it is apple so you got two different answers two different plants so a key is a set of contrasting statements called as couplet among these two statements you choose one statement and you reject another one and continue with this line of answering you will finally end up knowing the answer whether it is a new organism or already present organism therefore key will help in identification there are other taxonomical aids such as flora manuals and monograph flora is a book that contains the information regarding all the plants in a particular local area so that is a flora so it is a collection of all the information regarding all the plants in a local area manuals these contain information which will help you to identify the different species it could be plant species or animal species of a given area for example flora of udupi or flora of uttarakhand different areas will have different plant species and animal species right so manuals contain description of all and all the names of all the species of a local area whereas monograph the word mono so it contains information regarding one particular taxon so the detailed description of the taxon will be given when i say taxon it can refer to species class family kingdom order phylum anything so detailed description of one taxon can be studied under monographs all these are taxonomical aids which will help you in identifying an organism in naming an organism in classifying an organism and finally it will tell you whether it is a already known organism or a new organism that is about your first lesson the living world thank you